What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at real healthcare data. Now there is a lot of healthcare data out there. I can't possibly show you everything, but what I'm gonna show you are some of the things that I think you absolutely need to know if you want to get into healthcare data analytics. I'll also put all the data sets that we're gonna be taking a look at in a GitHub repo, so you can go and download these and you can take a look at them as well. With that being said, let's jump on my screen and take a look. All right, so we're about to look at a ton of different data sets. And this is something that I talked a lot about in the last video when I was talking about kind of the things that you need to become a healthcare analyst. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a lot of the different types and what they actually look like. So we're taking a look at the actual data that I've been working with for years. And if I were you, if I was getting started in healthcare analytics or I wanted to get into healthcare, this is absolutely what I would try to look into. I try to learn more about, I would be putting it on my resume because just knowing what ICD-11 codes are, for example, are really, really great to know. So as we go through here, I kind of explain the different types of data, how they work, what they're used for, and we'll go on from there. So what we're looking at is we are looking at ICD-11 codes. Now, these are just codes or classifications of diseases and health conditions. So for every single, what they call title, which is the disease or health condition, there's a code associated with it. And you'll notice, let's scroll all the way down. There are a lot of them. And it's because they get very, very, very specific. So let's come up here. And this is just like ultrasound. This is just a quick example. Within ultrasound, they can say, okay, they had an ultrasound scanner. Ultrasound scanners, mobile, portable, handheld. Um, they get very, very specific. And I'm just gonna randomly come up here in the middle. And you can see that uh, every single one of these codes is unique and it only is associated with one diagnosis or one health condition. And so what a doctor does is when you come in and they have to diagnose you or something's going on or they're specifying a certain health condition that you have, they search in their system and they specify this exact code and they put that in your electronic health record, your EHR or their EHR system. And then that code gets applied to you as a patient. And so this is something we're gonna actually look at some other data in a little bit that has ICD codes in it. And you'll see how it gets applied to a patient in that data. But these ICD codes are something that I've worked with so much. And I downloaded this just raw from, I think it was the World Health Organization. Uh, it needs a little bit of cleaning up, just a quick trim here or there. But uh, this is what the data looks like. And this is a great one to know about, to look into, and to talk about in interviews or to know when you actually get into a healthcare analyst position. This is really, really good to know. The next thing that we're going to look at are CBT and what's called HCPCS codes. That's what these codes are called, although you can, they're spelled HCPCS. People call them in the healthcare world HCPCS codes. And you'll notice right away that this is structured a little bit different. Again, I downloaded this raw from the actual website. I believe it was the Department of Health and Human Services or something like that, that they produce these codes and I just download it. And this is what it looks like. So it needs quite a bit of cleaning up because it's got some merged columns up here if you wanted to use it in columns and rows but it's all in here. And so it's gonna be very similar kind of to like an ICD code. There's a code, we have a code right here, and then there's something associated with it. So for CPT codes, those are called current procedural terminology codes. It really just describes a medical, surgical, or diagnostic procedure that was done by a healthcare provider. These codes are actually pretty easy to pick up because there's usually just five numbers. And so those ones you can kind of even just identify out of anywhere out of a lineup even, you can just say, oh, that's five numbers. It's probably a CPT code. Whereas if we come down here, we have the following CPT and HCPCS level two codes. And so this right here is going to be a HCPCS code. But if we uh, scroll down quite a bit, let's keep scrolling down. We're going to hit, there we go, more CPT codes. So then we have all of these CPT codes. And so one that is a good one to just kind of pick out is oral function therapy. This is this person goes in for some oral therapy and they get this code associated with them. Now, these CPT codes, these HCPCS codes, these diagnosis codes, they all get associated to a patient. And then typically, if that hospital does what they're supposed to, they're going to bill your insurance. Sometimes they won't if you're paying out of pocket, but if they bill your insurance, they're gonna file a claim that gets sent to your healthcare provider and they see all of these things. And so they know what this code is associated with, and that code is associated with a certain pricing, uh, depending on your area. And we're gonna look at some claims data in a little bit, but that's kind of how it works. And there's 
all sorts of things in here. We have caregiver training first 30 minutes, caregiver training an additional 15 minutes. There's a really a CPT code for anything. The HixPix codes, which are the ones that we're looking at right here, these are healthcare common procedure coding systems. These are gonna cover durable medical equipment, non-physician services, and medications. You can see if we go down, this one is an x-ray exam of the jaw. That's actually uh, a CPT code, but we have a letter in here. This is a bunch of medical jargon. And so if you don't know any medical jargon, which I can kind of understand what this is just at first glance, but if you don't uh, know medical jargon, some of that will not be uh, super easy to understand. There was a time where I would probably know uh, almost all of this, but... I don't anymore. But when you work in healthcare analytics and you're using all these different codes and this terminology and you start getting comfortable with it, you can really understand and read a lot of this. If you have any background in healthcare, you're probably looking at some of these things and you're like, oh, I know what this is. And that is a very valuable thing to know for a provider. So that's what CBT codes and HixPix codes are. So, so far we've looked at ICD-11, which is the most up-to-date ICD codes, by the way. There used to be ICD-10 and then before that ICD-9, but they updated every, I think every couple of years uh, to include new terminology and things like that. So we're on ICD-11, then we have CPT and HixPix codes. Let's take a look at something called a LOINC code, L-O-I-N-C. This is a logical observation identifiers, names, and codes. These are used for laboratory and clinical test results across different systems. So again, I just went and downloaded a raw data set. I didn't you know, change it in any way. You can see we have this test ID. This is the test order ID, so you can kind of see what it was for. Then we have the order LOINC code. This LOINC code, again, for laboratory and clinical test results, this is supposed to be something that ensures interoperability between electronic health records. All that means is that if you have EHR systems across multiple hospitals and you go to one hospital and you've got a procedure done and you go to another hospital, they're not going to accidentally do the same procedure. And so the LOINC code is kind of used so these different providers or these different hospitals don't accidentally do the exact same thing, or they can look in your patient portal and they can see, oh, this person had this test done. Let me go and take a look at that. So again, I'm going to have this, uh, we can scroll over just a little bit. This is kind of the, a uh, little bit about the method name and how they did it and the LOINC attribute as well. So those four coding systems, in my opinion, are the ones that I have used by far the most in healthcare analytics. These are ones that if I was just starting out, these would be the types of codes that I would be diving into. I'd be doing research on how these codes work. I'd be going into chat GPT and asking, okay, what is LOINC codes? How do they actually work within EHR systems? And they would give you a ton of information. I would do the same for ICD-11, CBT, HixPix, LOINC, all these different types of codes. I would also use them in projects if I could. So if you, you know, have uh, some data set that has ICD is probably the easiest one used for a project. But if I had a data set that included ICD-11 codes, I could then tie those tables together. I could make some visualizations. It'd be a really great project. The next one that we're going to take a look at is some sample claims data. Now, I've talked a lot about claims data throughout this series, um, and if you didn't know, this video is part of a series where I talk about healthcare analytics, how to get into it, what you uh, should know about it. Now we're looking at the data, and claims data is extremely, extremely important to know about. Now, what claims data is, is it refers to the billing and reimbursement information submitting by healthcare providers, so by a doctor or by the company to an insurance company. That could be Medicaid, Medicare, or Blue Cross Blue Shield, or whatever insurance that you have. It's gonna include a lot of information that we have in here. Now, this is very simplified. I would consider this very, very uh, simple data, but for the purposes of explanation, this is fantastic to look at. It can get 100 times more complex than this with claims data, but uh, I think this is a good you know place to start. So we have a claim ID, we have a provider ID, and here we have a patient ID. If you do it right, if you're all within, you know, one healthcare system, you should have one patient ID for one patient. But it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes in different systems, they mess up or they duplicate a patient or they have a different number and it gets really complex. And that's where, you know, the difficulty comes from. But you can also see the data service. Here's the build amount. And let's try scrolling over just a little bit because there's great information. So we have the bill amount. Here's the procedure code. So this is an actual CPT code. Then we have a diagnosis code. So these ones right here, I mean, this one doesn't say CPT code, but just by looking at it, it's five numbers. We know it's a CPT code. Then we have our diagnosis code. This is our ICD, and this looks like an ICD-10 code. If I'm just glancing at it, I don't know if this is uh, the updated ICD-11 codes. But then we have the allowed amount, the paid amount. Then we have the insurance type. So this is self-pay. We have Medicare, commercial, um, and different options like that. Here's our claim status. This is whether it was paid. 
if it was denied, if it's still being reviewed. Then if we scroll over just a little bit more, we have a reason code. So this is the reason why it was paid or why uh, that claim was submitted. We have the follow-up required, yes or no, the AR status and the outcome. AR status means accounts receivable. So whether they owe something still, this means it's pending, it's open, it's denied, partially paid. It uh, just depends on if the client has paid or it has not paid. And so this is what actual claims data looks like. I've looked at data just like this a million times. And, uh, you know, I haven't worked in healthcare in like two years, but this is giving me like really big throwbacks, a lot of nostalgia for a lot of the data that I actually worked with. Now, claims data can look like a lot of different things, but it will include a lot of similar data and data points that you're looking at in this data set. So again, I will have this down below if you want to download this from the GitHub, because this would be a really good one to maybe tie back using uh, those other ones to tie to the diagnosis code, tie to the procedure code. We have some sample patients. And one thing to just you know, this is an offhanded thing, but one thing to know about claims data is they de-identify the patient data. So we're not going to have names and addresses and all that stuff. Um, and it's the same for a provider ID, which is an ID that's associated with a specific doctor. You could actually go, and if this is, you know, fully real data, you could just search this in a database online or Google this number for a hospital or provider ID, and you should be able to find the doctor that is associated with that code. With the patient, you would never be able to do that because that's private information, but doctors are required to have kind of a public ID that is associated when they pass their medical licensure. So just some random tidbits of information that I thought was pretty interesting. Lastly, we're gonna take a look at some drug products or some pharmaceuticals. Now, I worked in pharmaceuticals and on the patient side and with doctors directly and with nurses in hospitals and on the clinical side. So I've worked with kind of all of these things in different areas, but I thought this data was pretty interesting and I'm going to spread this out just a little because it's going to get uh, quite busy. But within the drugs, we have a product ID, we have the product type name, then we have the proprietary name. So this is like the name that Pfizer might actually call it within their systems. So this is, you know, maybe you recognize some of these like Avista. Uh, that might be one that you recognize. But then, and let me kind of get it a little closer now. But then we come over here and we have a non-proprietary name. This might be something that maybe a generic company might reproduce this branded name and they might call it something else. That was a very common thing that we would look at when we were working with pharmaceutical data is the branded name versus the generic or the non-branded name. If we come down here and we scroll over just a little bit as well. We have some information about like what kind of dose it is, if it's an injectable, if it's a solution, if it's a capsule that you swallow and how you actually get that, whether it's intravenous, subcutaneous, topical, oral, this is how it actually gets into your system. Then we have things like start marketing date. We have end marketing date Go over a little bit more. You can see here's the uh, label name right here. So this is the company that actually created and produced it. And then we're getting into things like dosages. So this is the active numerator strength, the active ingredient unit. So this might be how much you're going to actually give a patient or the recommended dosage for that specific product. Now, this is just a side note, but this one right here, these are going to be the exact same product, but just different doses that they provide. So if you go to a doctor and you're getting Motrin, sometimes it's 200 milligrams, sometimes it's 100 milligrams. And knowing how many milligrams you're supposed to take, maybe you have to look on the back of the bottle, uh, that's why they have these different identifiers. So each row is a specific product. This one's 0 0.75 milligrams, this one's 1.5. Let's scroll over just a little bit more. And we have a pharma class. So this is kind of the uh, pharmaceutical reason for what it helps with or what it does. Again, this is something I worked with all the time within healthcare. And when I was talking about specifically kind of the uh, proprietary or the brand name versus the generic name, I worked a ton with that kind of data. And so a lot of this, again, I'm just getting huge flashbacks just talking about this stuff because this is stuff that I worked with all the time. We were you know, putting it in different databases, creating all these different data schemas to join the tables together. And we were cleaning all this data. And this is the kind of stuff that if you're just getting into healthcare analytics, you want to start working with healthcare data, 
this data is amazing to look at and work with and find and try to create a project with. So I hope that it was helpful to actually take a look and have me walk through exactly what this data is and how it is used within healthcare. There's a lot of different types of data out there, as I mentioned at the beginning, but these are the ones that I've worked with basically my entire career within healthcare. So with that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe below, and I'll see you in the next video.